is it better for me to be toiling with my gift? You see, with my gift, I still toil. With my gift, I have to prepare. With my gift, I have to still do a whole lot. That's it. Gift turns you into a professional. That's what gift makes you. It makes you able to know how to do that thing very well. But what makes that thing function very well is when somebody else enter inside your body and take you over. Or he walks into your life or into the meeting or into your business or into your professional life or into your travel or into anything and begin to do it for you. And then you back off and you become a witness. Which one is better? I'm asking all of you, which one is better? Is it you toiling under a gift? Or is it God himself? Because you've worshipped him enough. You've been in his presence enough. Your conscience is clear. You are not greedy for power. You are not greedy for money. You are not greedy for material things. And God has looked in the inside and sees you, who you truly are. And you add presence. You add the word. Meditation. That is cooking the word. You boil the word. The word, the word now carries power. You use the word to pray. You use the word to sing. You use the Bible to speak mysteries. You use the word of God to, to begin a song, to make up a song for him and dance for him. You put some fasting to it. You separate yourself. And as you enter to do what you want to do, God appears. God appears and he takes over the meeting. I have heard Kenneth Hagen that has gone to be with the Lord spoke of him being in a meeting and God came in. The glory of God came in. And let me tell you brothers and sisters that I have experienced this so many times. I have climbed the pulpit to preach in the Presbyterian churches and suddenly I heard a voice say to me, close that sermon. I've written a nice sermon. You know in our churches we write our sermon. Everything we preach or we teach, we write it down. We record it. We document. We are very good at honest. We document everything. And I heard a voice say, close that book. I thought somebody was standing behind me. I didn't understand. When I turned around, I thought it was one of the elders or deacon of the church. I turned around, I did not see anybody. I heard again, physically, I heard physically, close that book. And I close. I opened the book to begin to look. You know, I have my points. Then I will teach. Then I will look at the next point. Then I will teach. I heard a voice say, close that book. Twice. So I close it. Immediately I closed the book, I felt a tug. See, at my back here, right here, right here, on my back, I felt like somebody opens me up, slides me open, pa, and enters my body. And instantly, I was completely energized energized physically and I saw the person took my body I didn't know what's going on 
but I left the pulpit and entered the congregation. And I began to tell this one, I said, stand up. You see, ministry is solving people's problem in the now. I wasn't preaching anymore. I began to talk to people that God wanted to talk to them. God began solving problems on the spot. That's how I learned that ministry is about solving people's problem. That's all it is. And then after, after the Holy Ghost, after Jesus have moved around with me and solved the problems of those whose problem needed to be solved immediately. I mean, at this time, when I tell this person stand up, I begin to tell them what was happening in their bedrooms. What was happening at their businesses. They never told me. I didn't know anything about it. And what happened? Then I went back to the pulpit and I spoke for five minutes. And what I said in five minutes, the church exploded. The church just exploded. People went wild. It solved, the message solved people's problems. You need the glory. The glory is the heavy, weighty presence of the living God. The heavy, weighty presence of the living God. You need God to walk in to this spot to take over. That is what you need tonight. See, go, go and look at the internet. Look at, look at everywhere you are. There are Bible school, theological school, people wanting you to do some online stuff to get ordained, to be in ministry, to, to have an MBA, to be a nurse, to be an attorney. There is so many schools in the world. How many of it is solving the problems of humanity? I am asking you to ask God for the glory, not just for the anointing. Be like the Chimera. Say to Jesus, the gift is not enough for me. I am struggling with the gift. I'm operating with the gift. Why you need the glory is that when God comes in as the glory, if the Holy Ghost comes in, not as the anointing, not as the gift, but as the person to do it for God, for himself, for Jesus is a different ballgame entirely. The vendor. Yes. I want you to begin to ask God, not just for the anointing, but for the glory to come upon what we spoke about. And mute your phone again. I know you at your job. C and G, are you guys still on the line tonight? Yeah, yes, I'm not here. Okay. Begin to ask God for the glory to appear. His heavy, weighty presence to come. 
into what both of you are doing. Both of you have gift, but you need the glory. Miss uh, Queen B, are you on the line? Yeah. Okay. Tell God that you love the anointing, but you want his heavy, weighty glory, his presence, to be involved in this with you. Same thing with Barbara. Stephanie and I am in Germany. Dorothy, I know you will be watching this. I know that next week you and your husband are on your way to Italy. I want to thank you for your givings. But for what you and I have been talking about with your husband and your children and grandchildren, you need the glory. The reason why the church doesn't work for people is because the glory is not there. The glory has departed. And what remains is just the anointing. And just a little bit of the anointing. Just the gift. And they are struggling with the gift. I do not want to be struggling with gifts. I want Jesus to appear in every meeting that he asked me to hold for him. I want the Father to appear. I want, I want the angels to appear. I want the heavy, weighty presence to appear and every problem will be solved. It is until the glory appear that money appear. It is until the glory appear that permanent healing appear. One of the things I'm going to be doing in my lifetime that I really, I really pity myself that I have to do all this. But I'll do them to the glory of God. Is that I'm going to spend some time to teach you that through the glory you become rich and you can never be broke. You become healthy that you become healed and you can never be sick. Somebody needs to prepare you guys for these things. If not, you will go through the internet and pray all the prayers. Go to all the churches. Visit every church you want to. Listen to all the inspiration, word channel, all kind of places, the TV and the order. You will watch all of them. Lay your hand, send offerings, buy books and CDs and oil and everything, and nothing will still happen. And you will still be operating under the wretched gifts, which is anointing of those people. What you need is a heavy, weighty glory of God. And it comes mainly through the practice of the presence of God. That is the love of God beyond everything. Tonight I want you to lift up your hand to heaven and say to God, What I need is the glory. I know that I've been told Many times that I need to be anointed. Yes. The anointing is the license and the certification to operate. To stand in an office and to operate in certain gifts. But it's not all there is. What really, really is collected and make it fun. I'm talking of real fun. Can you believe me? A taxi cab was taking me to somewhere. The past two days have been days of great things happening in my life that I've not had time for anybody. I took very few calls because of what is going on. And I was in a taxi cab to go and meet one of my sisters who, who owns a, a beauty a salon. And, uh, and then to, 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 to do a little shopping. 
And I remember this guy from Bangladesh. He actually believed that I am a multimillionaire. I'm telling you. <laughs> the, the, the glory, the glory is what makes life easy for you. It's not the professional position. It's not the intellectual mind. It is when the Holy Spirit who anoints you actually comes to do it for you and through you that it becomes fun. You don't get tired. You don't get sick. You don't get broke. Get it from me. I am telling you because God is my witness that I'm telling you tonight that you need prayer. But more than prayer, you need the presence. That you need the anointing. That more than the anointing, you need the glory. That you need faith and prayer. But then you need the pronouncement. Hallelujah. And that what you say is what God will do. And what you see is what he will give to you. But when you begin to talk fear and how you will fail and how things are so difficult, wow, God remove himself because that is not his language. Be careful about your language because what you are saying is making the glory not to come. If what you are saying is making the anointing not to operate, how much more the glory? Think about that. There is a certain sum of money that I need to, to, to do certain things in ministry. And I'm telling God that I'm going to get it. I'm telling him that he's going to give it to me. And he knows he must give it to me. He knows it. There's no two ways about it. There's a certain car I'm asking God to give to Beverly in the UK. God knows that he must give it to her. He knows it. Can I be honest with all of you? The windows of heaven is not something that is in one place. Anytime you sow your seed to my ministry, Anytime you sow a seed, an offering, a tithe, the window is heaven. The windows of heaven comes. The windows of heaven is not something that is open and stand. It's something that comes. Begin to order the window of heaven to come to you. Let's face the reality. Because no pastor will have told you these things. Or a robot of blessed memory says that the blessing of God and his prosperity is constantly passing you by. You are the one to stop it and grab it. When once you sow or you bless me, the windows come. And it is you who is supposed to say, hey, because I belong to the glory. The glory. You see, the glory make this thing come to you of its own. You don't struggle for it. I mean, there is a place for you to work hard to ask God to connect you to the right people. But I'm not going to be telling you one side, one side of the story. There's a place that you need to pray for God to connect you to the right kind of people who understand what is required of you in certain things of life. And then you know exactly that this is what is required of you for this. I went to Atlanta to do certain things. And I knew exactly what is required of me in just and so place. And I prepared for it today, Tita. And I went exactly with it. And when I reached, I gave to the woman. The woman tore one, two, three. A few minutes, boom, call done. What is required? Ask questions. Ask the right people. Ask 
as for divine connection, God is going to use human to do certain things. But also there is the path of God that his glory is going to come of his own. I want you to lift up your hand to heaven tonight and begin to ask God for the glory. We are used to only saying, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Nobody has told us what is the glory. What is the power? <laughs> what is the kingdom? <laughs> go and ask the priest. Go and ask all this. They have no idea. They have no idea. Some of them have intellectual ideas about these things. Have they experienced it? No. I remember that guy that went to the Amazon jungle, whatever is their name, to go and preach the gospel to them. They told him, listen, in our culture, except you've seen what you are telling us, we will not believe you. We will send you, we will, we will send you away. The man came to them to preach about Jesus, how Jesus died, this, that happened to Jesus, blah, 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 happened to Jesus, blah, blah, blah. And they asked him, did you see this Jesus? He said, no. Did your father see this Jesus? He said, no. Did your grandfather or grandmother see this Jesus? They said, no. They said, you know that you are a fraud. How can you come to tell us of somebody that you've never seen? Your parent did not see him. Your grandparent didn't see him. Your great-grandfather didn't see him. And you have the audacity to come and tell us about him. You must be out of your mind. That's how he turned from being a missionary to an anthropologist. Don't practice what you've not experienced. Don't don't practice what you've not experienced because it's not going to work. Paul wrote what he wrote, did what he did, acted the way he did because he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. I'm doing what I'm doing because I've seen Jesus. I've been to heaven. I've seen angels. This is real. I have experienced the Holy Spirit. I have seen some of the glory. I need a whole lot of it. More than I have ever needed it. I thank God for this revelation. At this time of my life. He let me be aware of it. If not, I will end up like the rest. Who we'll play church until the day God calls us home. Lift up your hand to heaven and say, Jesus. Can I say something to you guys? Spend some time to read John chapter 17 from verse 1. Begin to go down. Follow it. Verse 1 following. You see somewhere where Jesus said, Father, glorify me. He talks about the Father, the Father, that He has given Him His glory. That He wanted the Father to fill Him with the glory that He used to have when He was with Him. Why did Jesus talk a lot about glory? Now it makes sense to me why he did. It makes sense to me why he did. I am a junkie of the glory because the glory is everything. The anointing is not everything, but the glory is everything. The anointing is the gift. The glory is the person who owns the gift. Ha <laughs> ha! I need the person, not the gift. That's why marriage is fair. You want what the woman has or what the man has. The thrills, the pleasure, the money, the material resources. And you have nothing, little or nothing to do. With the person. Hallelujah. Do you think Ruth was stupid? That she wanted Boaz. Because if she got Boaz. She got everything. The one that I 
anoint is the Holy Ghost. The anointing is the office. But what I want, what I want is the one that anoints. What I want is the one that gives the gifts. What I want is the one who made me. I want him to come into everything that I'm doing and begin to bless it. If not, God will be nothing but a professional colleague that does not carry any sacredness. Please lift up your head. Lift up your head and, be, and look up. Just do it for once. Look up to heaven. Just as Jesus did in John 17. Look up to heaven. Use your spirit or imagination to see Jesus, to see the Holy Ghost, to see the Father. And then lift up your hands too. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit or begin to just pray in English or whatever language. If you have a native language, pray. If you are from Germany, pray in German or in Deutsch or something. If you are in from if you are from the French speaking world, pray in French. If you can speak Creole, pray. Pomela. Can you pray in Kosa? Pray in Kosa. God will hear you. I want you to lift up your hand and lift up your head and look up and say, Oh God, those of you from Jamaica, from Haiti, from different parts of the West Indies, pray in your language. I want you to begin to pray and to say, Lord, I need the person. I need you, Father. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need the glory. I need a heavy, weighty presence of yours in my life. And let it begin to solve every problem and remove every problem. Lord, begin to visit me. Open the phone line and begin to pray. This is the time for prayer. This is not the time to keep quiet. You keep quiet, nothing happens. You pray, things begin to happen. Let's go. Lord, I need that person. Lord, I'm a junkie for the glory. I need the glory. You are a heavy, weighty presence. That's what I need, oh God. I need the glory, oh Jesus. Ha barando show kayande. I need the glory, Jesus. I need the glory, Lord. Whatever is going to take for me to have the glory, I need the glory, Lord. I need you, the person, and not just the anointing. I need you, the person, and not just the anointing. Lord, I need the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I need the glory. Lord, I need your heavy wedding presence. Lord, I need the glory. So that ministry, life, and living will be made easier for me. Thank you, Jesus. 
that you are called to ministry. Pamela, Geneva, Beverly, Barbara, Maria, Rebecca, Maria of Nebraska, Arian and Stephanie, Beverly, Barbara, Miguel, Chaferro, Doris, Mariam, Noet, Beth, is there anyone whose name I've not mentioned? Mine. Marlon? Marlon. Yeah, I've mentioned the weight. Marlon Davinda C and G and my mama, Miss G from Florida. Who again is it that I've not mentioned? on the line tonight. <laughs> Adrian, how you do? I don't know what that is. Okay, well, how picking them? seriously about the issue of being in ministry and business in one form or the other. I'm going to make a pronouncement over you all and things will escalate for you. In the name of the Son of the Living God, Father, I separate every one of your people to the order of the sacred blood. I separate them to your glory. Anoint them with your giftedness and let the oil sink deep in their bones. Let their very body become something that is greater than they've ever seen. Each and every one of these, your people. Hmm. And for those of them, let me mention Dorothy. I did not in Switzerland. And for those of them, Lord, that I am personally going to give a call and ask him or her to join what I'm doing. Of course, every member of the millionaire family is part of this. So I mention all the grandkids and kids of Barbara. Excuse me. Please, can you guys still hear me? Okay. Barbara, what are the names of those kids? 
Um, my three daughters are Sheila, Tina, and Margaret, and my grandkids are okay. Reagan, Sarah, Julie, and Alex, and the Salvador and Armando. Okay. I am separating all these people tonight for the work of ministry, whether it be ministry in families, ministry in churches, ministry in ministry, ministry in the world, ministry in politics, business, making money. Doris, I separate you. I separate you. Each of you late. The anointing come upon you tonight. Let the anointing come upon you tonight. Isn't it interesting? Just at the time that I am making this pronouncement, there is a, a shooting, a firework that is going out by the river out here behind me. <laughs> I mean, you can hear it. If I, if I go out to the balcony here, you begin to hear it. and the new, uh, a new oil is coming up on every one of you. New oil, new oil upon each and every one of you who feel called to the ministry. I'm simply doing what God said I should do. And some of you will be chosen from out of this pronouncement into something higher. I mean, just as I just start saying it, fireworks began. Big ones is going out there right now, just as I'm about to do it. <laughs> no devil can touch any of you. No power of the enemy can touch any of you. Let miracle signs and wonders follow each and every one of you. Let the power of his blood and of his resurrection be heavy upon each of you. Let the light of God come upon each and every one of you and let darkness flee forever. Father, by the authority given to me, I separate each and every one of them. The Stephanie and the Aryans and all the people who have been called to ministry. Out of them, Lord, choose. Choose those that you want to train for the holy ministry in today's world. Out of them, choose those that are to go into becoming millionaires and billionaires. Choose them tonight. From these people, Lord, choose those who are to become builders of empires, owners of great wealth. Choose them, Lord. Choose them now. It's about time that you do it. And for those who do not feel called to ministry, but they feel called to living a professional life. Let the anointing come upon them for success. The anointing to be successful. Let it come upon them. The anointing for holiness and for power. Let it come upon them. And right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who feel called to this power thing, let the glory, ah, that is the real thing now about to happen. Let the glory come upon them right now. I do not wish them to parade with the gift. I want you, the give of the gift, to do ministry for them. Oh, come on. <laughs> Lord, that's how it goes. Yes, I know this is a big thing that I'm asking, but do it for them, Lord. Come and live the life they are living. Change it, Lord. 
and come and give them a different lifestyle. Let the heavy weighty glory follow them. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. What I have spoken over you is now running in you and can never be taken back. But now and forever. Amen. And now, Father, release angels to do this job also with them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I will have a special service that this is what I'm going to say to this is what I'm going to say to each of you. Excuse me, I cannot really tell this. Just a minute, please. Ridiculous. Somebody's calling me at this time of the night. Now here it is. For those of you who feel called to ministry or called to, to the millionaire family, you are called to make a break with poverty in your family. Give me Send me an email, write to me, or call me. I'm not talking about tonight. I'm not talking about tonight. If you feel called to ministry and ministry with me, or your own ministry, please let me know. Those of you who feel called to do ministry with me, let me know. Those who are called to do ministry with your church, let me know. So that I know where to put each person. But out of the people I've prayed for tonight, God is going to choose people for some special ministries in the world. Now, I pray that the same glory the heavy, weighty presence of God will visit every one of us on the prayer line tonight. And thank you, Jesus, for this mighty outpouring. Tomorrow morning by 8, from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning, I will be, uh, I will be on, the, on the prayer line to be ministering till 10 o'clock then. Nobody will see me until Sunday. And on Sunday morning, I'll be again for the Sunday morning service from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, and that is it. May the Almighty God bless your weekend, and may it be very good. Remember to go to our uh, itikaimeriministry.com, send in your prayer requests, and also sow your seed or do your donation. Remember that if God is calling you for a special ministry in the world, or if God is calling you, into the millionaire family. Remember to sow a special seed or to send me a generous seed. There is something that is about to happen. And I thank God for it. I am the first to receive it. And I want it to be passed to you. Good night and God bless you. And have a very wonderful weekend. Make this weekend a very good one. Bye-bye.
So thank you. So thank you very much for being with me. Please try and find something good to do during the weekend and God be with you. Good night. Bye bye.